Hello everyone, and welcome back to another GIS lecture video. And in this lecture video, I want to begin our discussion on remote sensing by talking about our first topic, which is raster data. And so hopefully this is going to be mostly a review as we've already talked about raster data previously. But I want to just bring it up again, make sure everyone's on the same page, and highlight a couple of new features that are specific to dealing with imagery um, that weren't necessarily as important when we were talking about raster data before. So let's give ourselves a little bit of space here and just to remind ourselves that we're talking about this idea of raster data. Let's make that a little cleaner. Of raster data. And so, if you remember our discussion on raster data last time, right, what we came up with was this idea that a raster was essentially a grid of evenly sized cells or pixels, right? So, each piece here Right. This, we said, was a pixel or a cell. Right. And we said that inside of the cell, there was a number, which I'm going to call X. Right. And we called this number We called this the value. Right. And so we said that what a raster was, was a raster was a, a grid of evenly spaced pixels, each containing a value. And we said that each raster was organized in a series of rows, so horizontal, so this would be row 1, right, and row 2. row three and columns columns being the vertical arrangement All right, so this would be column one All right. this would be column two All right column three and so on All right and so raster data was a was an arrangement a regular arrangement of grid cells containing values in rows and columns. Right. Now that we're dealing with remote sensing, there's two additional pieces that we need to be aware of. The first is going to be the fact that what we can have are we can have multi-band rasters. Multi-band rasters, right? And with a multi-band raster, what happens is this arrangement of rows and columns, right, this whole thing, we would call a band. Okay? And so what we can have in multi-band rasters is we can have another set right of rows and columns that would be a second band right so this would be band 2 it would also have be arranged in rows and columns built up of pixels containing values, right? The critical thing here is that this is one image, right? This whole thing, I'm going to do my best to not make this too messy, right? This whole thing here
would be one image, right? Where this pixel and this pixel are on top of each other, right? So it might be more useful in some sense to think of this as a cube, um, where you have three dimensions. Right? So you could think of this as being something like this, right? So let's say we have a two band raster. What that means is we would have make this simple. It's going to be three columns and two rows, right? Two band raster means it's going to have another two column or three columns, two rows. And so if we wanted to think about what this raster has is it has an X, which is the row. It has a Y, which is the column. And it has a Z, which is the band. Right? And so if I were to go first row, right, I would be looking at this row here. Second column would put me here, would be here. And second band would put me here. Right? So this is all one data structure. Right? And we'll talk about what this means as remote sensing when we talk about electromagnetic radiation. But for now, the key part here is to understand that you can have more than one band in a raster, which adds this Z dimension. So not only are we worried about what row and column we're looking at, but we're also worried about what band we're looking at, right? And so we could have a four band raster, just to make this point hit home. Right, we could have a four band raster, and if we were to make it a small, three by three here, right? One, this would be band one, right? Band two, right? Band three, and then squeezing it in the edge here, right? Band four, right? And so if we were trying to get the value stored in this pixel right here, right? What we would have to do is we would have to go to the second column or second row, right? Second column, fourth band, right? And that would tell us to go second row, second column, all the way down to the fourth band, okay? So hopefully this makes sense. The other key thing that we need to make sure that we understand, because it's very important for remote sensing, is this idea of cell size. Or spatial resolution. Let me try to make that a little bit cleaner. S-P-A-T-I-A-L, spatial resolution cell size or spatial resolution and the way spatial resolution works right if we draw ourselves a two band raster right, i'm going to make it simple and just have it be two rows two columns two bands All right two rows two columns two bands right what cell size or spatial resolution refers to is the length of one side of one pixel. All right, so cell size slash spatial resolution right 
That refers to the length. of one side of one pixel. One side of one pixel, right? Again, spatial resolution refers to the length of one side of one pixel. Okay? And we'll talk about why spatial resolution matters more in um, the next couple videos and a lot more in the next module but basically what we're talking about here is that you can have cells be different sizes which can in turn affect how um, affect your ability to be able to see things in the ultimate image right because again what remote sensing ultimately is is we're using electromagnetic radiation that bounces off of surfaces to figure out what we're actually looking at on the ground without ever having to actually go to the ground. So let's look at two quick examples of spatial resolution. So let's say we have one that's three feet. Right? So our spatial resolution is three feet. And we have another with a spatial resolution of one foot. Okay? Right, so let's do the one foot in a different color. Let's do the one foot in yellow. So what does that mean? Well, if we were to draw four pixels, right, like this, right, what this means, what this spatial resolution means is that this distance right here is three feet, right? This distance right here is also three feet, right? This distance here is three feet, and so on, right? Because spatial resolution is the length of one side of one pixel. So when we say that this raster, the simple two by two raster, has a spatial resolution of three feet, what we mean is the length of one side of that pixel, of one pixel, is three feet, okay? So for the sake of the same of argument, I'm going to assume that the upper left corner is the same for both of the images. This is a new image. This is not a second band. This is a new image, okay? That has a spatial resolution of one foot. Well, what does that mean? That means that we're only going to go about a third of the way along that line. We're going to go a third of the way along that line and make a square. Do that again, another third, another third, another third, right? And so what we're saying if we're talking about a spatial resolution of one foot is that that distance there, that is one foot, right? That is also one foot, right? This distance here, right? This is one foot. And what I want you to think about when, we're, when you think about spatial resolution and cell size, right? Compare these two images together, right? Compare these two very simple, <laughs> right? Two row, two column rasters. What you'll notice is that, right, this yellow raster here has a spatial resolution of one foot. You can see how much less space it covers, right? It fits within less than one of the of the pixels, right? The whole band, the whole raster here, fits within one pixel of the three foot spatial resolution, right? This is this is the critical importance of spatial resolution, right? That it decreases the size of the of the, of the size of area that the pixels cover. So for the same size, right? The same number of rows and columns, right? A smaller spatial resolution, right, is going to cover less area. Okay, so again, think through spatial resolution means the length of one side of one pixel. As you decrease the spatial spatial resolution, right, the size of the pixels gets smaller. Right, the pixels cover less area. Okay, so again, spatial resolution, the length of one side of one pixel, and this idea that we can have multiple bands within a single image, giving us that extra dimension to be able to work with, okay? 
So hopefully all that made sense. And as always, if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.